tell you, I feel very lucky because I get to not only work with fabulous distributors like, like Sophia and Peter and Susan and Will, but also I get to work side by side with Danae. And I have to tell you, this man, he really, really cares. It's not an act. He is the most sensitive, compassionate person I know. And I think that when you come in, you're just, you're gonna fall in love with him just like I love him, Sophia loves him, here he comes. So without further ado, we have today Montague uh, King. Uh, this started, this whole thing, it was Danae for a long time, for many, many years and it started right in this country. Now, most of you didn't know that. The whole damn thing started in England. I'm, I'm very much an Anglophile, always have been, and um, my dad's Welsh, and uh, so I just feel totally at home here. This is kind of auspicious for me to be back here after a long, long time, and you're all kind of newish, I understand, right? So what we're going to do today, I have a PowerPoint, I think, mm -hmm. Let me see, how do I work this? Uh, Julia has the clicker for you. So you Who's Julia? Right here. <laughs> oh, hi, Julia. <laughs> I know who she is. Very lovely girl. Okay, let's go on to the next one. Well, we'll start with the acid mantle because and we're not going to pay attention. I hate PowerPoints. Actually, I, years ago, I traveled around the globe with the, some slides and an old clacky carousel and flip charts, and i draw things, you know. I was telling Will, one time in Ireland we had the venue at a big, an old church at night and the electricity went off. So I didn't stop, I just said bring some torches and they put torches on me and I drew things on the flip chart and they stayed and had a wonderful time. So when you see the word moisturizer and you've been brought up with that your whole life and you've all bought hundreds of moisturizers and the beauty business still advertises moisturizers etc but there is no such thing as a moisturizer it was a um, Madison Avenue New York ad company 1962 that decided to use this to sell beauty creams moisturizer beauty cream has nothing to do with moisture whatsoever Nothing. Now, every word I'm saying, I want you to paraphrase to your clients when you go back to work this week. The reason why, and this will empower you, you're not just beauty therapists, you're skin revisionists. That's what we all are worldwide. And that is not a buzz term. What does the word revise mean? To take back to original state. Think about that. So the word moisturize merely signifies we've got two secretive glands in our skin that we're born with that keep us smooth and moist for a long time until we hit about maybe 25 or so and then dead cells start building up. They don't naturally exfoliate as they did when we were younger. And we start thinking, oh, I'm dry, I'm tight. And the reason you feel dry and tight after you wash your face is because Dead cells shrink, and they're smaller than the living cells underneath, but they're still attached, there's still connections. Now, we won't go into all those connections today, but you're going to get that in the next few weeks, months. You're going to get things you've never even heard of, that the industry has never even heard of before. Totally different way of thinking. Doing the same treatments, just because you have new education and a way of looking at things doesn't mean you have to trot out a whole bunch of products that are different. But what we're coming into now, because we have so many successful practitioners around the world for so many years, that we're showing them different ways to look at things and explain why the DMK enzymes and all that work beyond what we've already said. So you're going to get a lot of things about the connections of skin cells and what they do and how they act and everything else. Remove, we have many ways to do that. We'll briefly touch on those. Rebuild is the most important thing. That takes a little bit of time. These one-offs that you see advertised all over the time is a bunch of rubbish. It's an attack on the skin. In every case, how many Indian women have I met over the years, from Durban to London? Wealthy Indian women come bumbling into our clinics with the worst cases of hyperpigmentation I've ever seen in my life. Remember that one that came up to Harley Street? The, she, she canceled her marriage, everything, because she was so embarrassed? Yeah, that's all because they're doing these flash 
flash type things, you know, look young in a week. It's not possible. So yeah, so we remove, rebuild, protect all that work we're doing. The sun is still out there and it's not our friend anymore. The ozone layer is going away. It's not coming back. We will change. 2,500, it will all have very dark skin, I think. It's natural. Human, the human race adapts itself, but it takes time to do that. If you brought someone forth from the 12th century to now, they would probably live in this gas that we've been breathing for about two days and drop dead of respiratory failure. But our lungs are used to it. They've gotten bigger. So the human race will adapt to the solar attack and everybody will have dark skin. And the, the Trumpers and the ignorant rednecks and that in America won't have anything to scream about because <laughs> they, they'll be dark too. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to be political. Uh, God, nightmare. Uh, and then, of course, maintain is what they do at home. And every single client has to be on the home prescriptives. If, if they're not put on them or if they refuse them, for some reason their girlfriend has had a DMK treatment, an enzyme treatment, etc. And so they want that done. And then you start talking about selling them retail. It puts them off right away. Well, I just bought SD Lauder. I think I'll use that first. No, they can't have the treatment without the home prescriptives. It's not a package deal. It has nothing to do with money. It has to do with their results, which is ongoing, okay? So, you know, I had a difficult time with the doctors in Russia with that years ago. They were so scared that if they started adding on the cost of the home prescriptives that the clients would flee out the door. Finally, I told them at a big medical conference in Moscow, look, when you write prescriptions for drugs and you hand them to your patients, where do they go? Well, they go to the apotec or chemist. Right, and who makes that money? Oh, well, the chemist. Right, so why don't you have your own goddamn apotec right here in your office? Oh, never thought about that. Then you control everything. It's not a question of economics, it's a question of what you think and how you think and how you impart that to your client or your patient. Okay, so remove, rebuild, protect, maintain. That's our four-tiered mantra. But you've got to talk to your patients, your clients, at the, at the scientific level and at the real level. You can't feed them BS because they see that in the magazines and everywhere all day long. Their eyes glaze over when they see an ad that says anti-aging, anti-aging. We don't say that, we say age management because there is no such thing as anti-aging. We're all gonna age, no matter what. But we can manage it. And that's what your job is, is to help them manage it until you can look someone in the face that's 40, 45 and say, if we start now, you give me about a year of your patronage, I can nearly guarantee you that you'll look exactly the same when you're 70. Yes, this can be done. I did it. Uh, Peter and, and everybody knows me when I was, what, 50s? 50? Am I that much different? A little bit. I'm thinner, but no, not really. I'd know if I was. <laughs> I'd admit it. No, I wouldn't. Okay, let's go on to the next. The body will reject any object that does not match our own natural biochemistry. That's what I meant when I was talking about ingredients. You can't put ingredients that the cells don't know or don't need or are not familiar with and expect to do something. It won't. The skin will reject it and either nothing happens which isn't good or contraindications. And as I said earlier, everything we see in the mirror that we don't like is a defense mechanism, period. I had lunch in with an old friend, Michael, and his husband, who's an Indian chap, southern Indian chap, uh, yesterday. And uh, they've been on DMK for a long time, Michael more than the Indian. And he's going to this therapist in their area, some muse somewhere outside of, in, in London, but outside the city proper, and he's going for this light thing for his circles around his eyes, which are getting darker with age. And I go, why are you doing that? Well, I don't want to get my mom, hers is really, I said, first of all, you're a Southern Indian. That's genetic, number one. Yes, we can do things about it. But why, what does she say this light is doing? What is it doing to the melanin that is overproducing genetically in the oris oculi area? 
Well, she said it's giving thermal energy, heat energy. Well, what does that mean? That has nothing to do with pigmentation at all. I said, I'll sort you out, and I will do. I'll, I'll text them what they need to do because we didn't have much time. But just remember that melanin's job is a defense mechanism, period. Rises to the surface in excess when we subject ourselves to radiation of sun or injury or smack in the face or anything. Big pimples, squeeze it too many times. It's a defense mechanism. Transepal dermal delivery, that's what we talked about earlier. Uh, what it simply means is I talked about the water and oil formulation, so it stays in the epidermis. And then by the different shunts of the skin influences everything else down. Okay? So it's not a direct like an injection, but there are many, many delivery channels in the epidermis. The hair follicle is one. Okay? This, there is the extracellular method between the cells. It's all in the formulation. Most of it has to do with water because water plus an incredible wetting agent that I stumbled across many years of cold, and now a lot of people are using it, called DMI. It's a wetting agent that's almost like nanotechnology, but not quite. And by the way, there will never be nanotechnology in skincare, ever, 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 no matter what they say. Because you cannot guarantee on the, in the atomic weight of a, a nanosphere, even, where it's going to end up. You can't. You can't promise anybody, oh, it's only going to go down to the dermis. No, it'll go to the liver. And it could be a perfectly harmless product loaded with nanospheres and lawsuit city. There'd be lawsuits all over the place. So it will never, ever happen in skin, no matter what they advertise. Um, but anyway, back to the transepidermal delivery is what we do in the treatments, principally with the home prescriptives. Next slide, please. Money will come no matter what. In fact, I think most of you, like the American therapists, oh, they're learning, are charging too little for your services. I really do. I know it's scary, but if you're changing someone's life, literally, and you have no idea, well, maybe you might. I had the terrible, terrible acne experience as a kid, kind of how it started me in this, in this field. It was terrible. And I was called a pretty boy from the time I was born. That's all I heard, pretty boy, pretty boy, pretty boy. I was the first of all the kids, and I had this weird IQ thing, and I went to private schools and all that. So I thought I was just a pretty boy. And then one day at 15, pretty boy's gone. And I went into a decline like you wouldn't believe. I was afraid to go anywhere. My parents were very social, and I had to go to these big house parties and that forced me to go. So I put this cheap uh, thing you bought at the chemist called Clearasil on my face like a makeup, and it hardened so I couldn't smile. So the, I was teased, oh, there, here comes the death mask kid, because it would crack if I smiled. And I'd find the secret corner in whatever room the party was going and just sit there. So I know very well how that influences young people's uh, lives. I was just telling Peter, we did a fabulous acne summit at the Royal Academy of Medicine a few years ago, and there's a wonderful video. You must show all these people that tape. It was an amazing testimonial with kids from all over the UK came in. It was like an evangelist meeting or something. They all wanted to get up and give their testimonies and that. Several were contemplating suicide. And there, the one of them, she was that lovely, she, I think she was a sort of a cafe au lait toned half black, half white girl, beautiful girl. Her mother sat in the front row, and she got up to give her testimony, because she had horrible, uh, sort of a, this a gross melia all over her face, like little cysts, like, like bullet shot under her skin. And she, it, nothing would help, nothing. And so before her mom took her to the Harley Street Clinic, the night before, she actually had pills from girlfriends and whatever, and she was actually going to do away with her son. She said, well, I can't go on like this. I can't. Well, and her mom didn't know this until she said that at this meeting, and her mom burst into tears. It was very moving. Uh, glycosylation. Now they call it glycation. Uh, this was an original one in South Africa. It's a white woman. She's only 44, believe it or not. That is uh, cross-linked wrinkles and that from glycation, which is, you probably know, excess sugar 
in the skin system. Ex you know, glucose is a primary source of energy, we all need some, but sometimes in some people it just pools and becomes sticky little microorganisms. So here comes the elastin fiber trying to do its job of snapping skin back when you move it, and then here comes collagen trying to do its job by supporting skin, and they glue together, and they can't move, so they <laughs> collapse, and you get these deep, deep cross-linked wrinkles. So that's where our aminodyne, I think we have another name for it now, don't we? Still aminodyne? I know we're changing it, I hate that, but anyway. Yeah, it cancels out the glycation immediately, but will that make all these deep red tides go away? No, you've stopped the action now, and they have to do it on a daily basis at home, stopped it. But it's going to take you time to revise the skin back to even that and beyond, but you can do. We do it all the time. Next, please. Uh, now, in the early 2000s, we started our medical combinations. Fillers were just coming in. I'd bootlegged them in from Russia and the different places. They weren't really popular in the United States, but we did it. We did it in all of our uh, countries where we would combine. For instance, this lady here, this is uh, Australia, yeah, Brisbane, Linda, doctor. Uh, she came in with, you see this all the time, and she did a very intense paramedical treatment that with the alkaline wash. <coughs> now, a doctor can get away with actually abrading the tissue to where it will scab up and all that, because they're an MD. And so they can do a, a light anesthetic, they can give them antibiotics, all of that, just to monitor until the scab comes off, and then you start working further with enzymes. Or you can do it slower, you don't have to, to go to that degree. We have very few beauty therapists in Ukraine and Russia. They're all doctors. And yet, they're the most successful of some of the most successful in our entire network. This is our scar revision, and, I, and we show this horrible example. This is a, a, a girl that was burned severely, and they had to do a lot of tissue transplants under her arm. And of course, when they healed, the scar tissue became very thick, hypotropic, so when she'd move her arm, her whole breast would move with it. It was very horrible, and, and she thought, well, that's my life. She came to our trauma center in Donetsk, which of course is gone now. We worked on her for a year and we got the scars to this level and full mobility of arm. So we do take on really bad cases. Don't be afraid of bad cases. Don't look at someone and say, oh, well, you know, I think I better send you down the road to a dermatologist. Don't. You don't have to. Work with them slowly, slowly, bring them along. As you elevate your education, you'll feel more confident. And you'll see some reactions. Sure, we're, we're not messing around here. There will be some reactions. Chemistry is reactive, but not, it's not allergies. Allergies are manifested by swelling up of the eyes, unusual rashes with nothing inside like sebum or anything, uh, shortness of breath. Those are allergy people. Now, will you have a few of these? Probably. We haven't had as many as I imagined all these years. But we do have them because there's something in some of the products that they are allergic to. It doesn't mean it's bad, it just means their body chemistry needs to be adjusted because they're allergic to that particular thing. But we've had very small uh, incidences because usually the therapists sort it out anyway over a period of time. Well, I've said it before, the living cells of the body do not accept any chemical, natural or synthetic. There's nothing wrong with synthetic, always. Uh. The body doesn't know the difference between synthesized vitamin C and something from an orange, oddly enough. Synthetic is from the Greek meaning to put together. It doesn't mean bad or fake. Some are fake, but not everything. But the point is, the living cells of the body don't accept anything that they don't recognize as part of their genetic blueprint. Next. Next. There is no single ingredient, and you've, I'm sure you've seen this a million times, our device that will change or alter or normalize all the functions of the skin. <coughs> Yet there's many people selling machines and equipment that sort of lead you all to believe that this will happen. If you get this machine, you're able to do No. It's bloody hard work. It's highly individual. And you've got to have an empathy for your patient, your client. 
unless you understand what you're working with as a concept. Forget the bloody products, they're just tools. That's all they are. Tools in a kit. I believe the best tools, and I work hard to make sure of that, but they're still just tools. Don't over-exaggerate what they, you know, client expectations are very important here because I'm sure some of you know already that your clients will tell you things they'd never tell their own husband or their girlfriend or maybe even their priest. I mean, you're privy to a lot of stuff. Okay, they trust you. If they trust you and you presented your diagnosis very professionally, if you gaze at them and say, hmm, the uh, preauricular is compromised and the frontalis is deeply, uh, deep retides and there's a certain amount of prolapsis in the nasal labial, <gasps> oh my God, I'm in more trouble than I thought. Because <laughs> you're using words that they haven't heard, unless they're a doctor or something. Now, that's a pain in the bum to talk like that all the time, but trust me, if you start doing that, it'll become normal to you. And it establishes your credibility, right? The first time they come in, that's the time to grab them. And you have to give tough love. You have to be tough because a lot of these ladies and gentlemen, they've had this, they've had that, or their uncle is a plastic surgeon, or you know, and, and they'll start to tell you what they want done. And what is that? where does that put you? A little servant girl. Madam, you might as well go to a spa in a hotel. No, no, no. They're coming to you as a skin revisionist specialist. But if you talk like that, where have they heard that before? They're doctors, right? And if you don't sell them anything, you put them on. It's like you go to the doctor with your strep throat, and gazes down your throat with the tongue depression, and says, okay, I'm going to put you on ampicillin. Off you go to the chemist and get that prescription because he or she said so. You wouldn't think of not. You want to get rid of it. So if you approach your patients or clients the same way, and you diagnose them properly, and at that point you say, okay, we're going to put you on X, Y, and Z. Now it's already in their mind. And then you do the treatment. So X, Y, and Z is not a big deal afterwards. You don't have to fight to have them go retail. It's already done. Then your receptionist goes over it again to make sure they know the routine. And you don't give them everything in the beginning, not even if they can afford everything in the beginning because that's too much to assimilate. You give them the key home prescriptives, and then you talk about, later on, when we see, like two, three weeks from now, when we see this and that, then we will add whatever. And then they become used to it. And after a while, you've got them for life. Long, long time. You really do. I've seen it here in the UK when, when we used to drive all over the country on our whistle stop tours and many of the clinics would have lovely garden, well, you had that one, posh big one, Ricky. My God, it was like going to Ascot or something. <laughs> fabulous. Champagne and all the tops in town, it was fabulous. Um, and I would see the people that I would see two years before and they didn't look any different. Looks the same. And I can tell. I can tell who's not doing the treatments and who is. Well, I don't have time, I'm so busy. No, well, your face is your advert. There's no such thing as skin types. Only skin condition. Good example, woman 45 comes to your clinic. She's got onset adult acne because of a husband that's a, a real rotter and he's running around on her and she's stressed and all this. And she's showing shoulder damage. So, what are you going to treat first, the acne or the aging? See what I'm saying? You treat both. You treat her condition. And oddly enough, the enzymatic treatments suit all of that. The only difference would be some of her home prescriptives that would address the acne. Because what happens, you've got a little antenna up here on the head called the hypothalamus gland. And it sends all signals of stress to the body. And it could be subliminal stress, you don't know what it is, that's the worst kind. It could be job related, it could be spousal related, it could be anything. But it is stress and it comes down and the message is received by the pituitary gland. The pituitary gland picks up the telephone and calls the adrenal gland. Stress coming through! They get all excited like they're supposed to and they directly call the testosterone. Every woman has some and every man has estrogen, some more than others, but <laughs> they do. Okay. 
The elevated testosterone immediately sends a signal to the sebaceous gland in the skin says, pump more oil. So that, is, that happens. Now, at that point, this person would only have slightly oilier skin for a while, but no, they also have this buildup of dead cells with the solar damage factor and the, you know, getting the loader factor. So up comes this like water behind a dam. Can't go evenly on the skin anymore. It's part of the acid mantle. So it's sort of reservoirs. Now when that happens, more defense kicks in. Little baby cells say, oh, that's not supposed to be there. We better encapsulate that, keep it from spreading. So they encapsulate it. Now you've got a cyst. You stick a lancet in it, nothing comes out but blood. Those are the most annoying, aren't they? That's all defense mechanisms. So obviously, when this woman sees some things starting to change from her very first treatment, usually, now what happens to this signal? It gets less, 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 less. And the hormonal cascade, cascade starts to quiet down. And the cortisol levels start to come back to normal. So you've got an internal healing at the same time you're doing the topical. Keep that in mind. We breathe in this noxious gas that we've become accustomed to over the decades into our lungs, but thank God it doesn't go directly into the capillary system or the venous system. It goes into little chambers in the lungs called the alveolus. Then when it's needed somewhere, let's say skin, O2 hemoglobin is added, which cleans it up. Then it goes into the capillary loops and so on and so forth. So when you see that marvelous plasmatic effect after you do the enzyme, and sometimes it's different than others. Some are really obvious, others are less. Uh, that's what's happening. That is true oxygen therapy, okay? Blasting oxygen on the face doesn't do anything whatsoever. Or putting peroxide in creams and saying oxygen green <laughs> doesn't do anything. Now, what if somebody comes in and they don't show any of that for the first time? That means they need more treatment. Now, what if someone comes in and they shows that several times, but then doesn't so much anymore, but they're regulars and they're on their home prescription? It means that their skin is in homeostasis, which is what you want. All the intercellular fluids, everything's level. I think that's why we do so well in China is because they're all indoctrinated with TCM, which is all about yin-yang, homeostasis. And they understand that concept very well, you know, on the chemistry. But that's what we're all working towards, is complete homeostasis in the skin that they can maintain. And, you, and also, you have to be available for later. They're going to have times, some of your patients, clients, male, female, kids, are going to have times in their life that are really rough and hard, and they're going to experience all kinds of things. And they have to know that, oh my God, this is happening, but I can go to so-and-so and get it fixed. They'll sort me out. And you will every time. Rosacea. <coughs> Quickly, all rosacea starts with a tiny little microscopic mite called the demodex mite. Now, it took a long time for the scientific community to agree with me on this, but they finally are. University of Padua finally says yes. Uh, they breed in the sebaceous glands, male, female. Microscopic. You can think it sounds gross, I know. You think you might have <laughs> It's been misdiagnosed so many times, but yeah, they do breed, and they start getting so multitudinous that they put pressure on the peripheral capillaries, which start to swell up at certain junctures. And of course, through the translucent layers of the upper epidermis, turn bright red. And now the skin starts to break down at that point. It's got a, a, a mob working against it. So if there's a little bacteria hanging around or a little virus hanging around, they see the party, okay, we'll go to that party too. And now you've got infection, inflammation, and everything else. But it all starts with a little mite. So my first thought was, let's kill the mite. What can we kill the mite? With alkaline wash. It's water. It's a very high pH. And anything proteinous, like the little heads of those little MFs, our proteinous, it kills them. Okay, now we've done that, and it, it's pretty fast. But then you've got the journey of rebuilding the skin back up again after all those years of assault from 
rosacea, but your rosacea can be cured. You can do it and tell your patients that have it. If, if they really do have it, a lot of other uh, cuprose conditions, red faces of that are not really rosacea. A lot of those are people suffering from transepidermal water loss. So how do we put out that fire? Water, more water, all right? But yeah, this gal, you can tell by her expression in the before and after, she just had this look, even with the eyes closed, oh, well, I've tried everything, this one's not gonna work either, because she had tried for a long time. And then after it was gone, she has a smug little look, even though you can't see her eyes, it's just, you can see. You know. Ah, this is my new. I'm very proud of it. How many of you here have been using environment? One, two, three, four. Do you understand what it is? Okay. I was forced into it, and this will be the end of my dissertation. I was forced into it by my partner, Randy Larson. He stomped into my office one day and said, um, we've got to get into probiotic skin care. I go, why? Because everybody's talking about it. I go, so when have I ever done anything just because anybody, everybody's talking about it? If I did that, I wouldn't be here 55 years later. He goes, no, but I'm telling you. I said, Randy, what they're doing is they're taking powdered yogurt and throwing it into creams and saying it's probiotic. Nothing's happening. Nothing. Nothing. Might as well put real yogurt on the face. It'd be better, you know. So I just kind of let that slide, and he kept hammering away. And then I came across some research out of Japan about eczema and the microbiome and there was some success. Now, eczema has always been my big bugaboo. I mean, yes, we can relieve it a lot, we can get rid of it for a while, it always comes back. But with this research, it showed much more significant improvement in eczema. So I started working with it. And we finally came up with the three different steps. First, you have to cleanse the, in a microbiota way to help set up, because we've got colonies behind our ears, other parts of the face, and all of our body. You can Google that and see the different uh, microbiome fields of the body and where they are. But sometimes they, they kind of hide and they don't, they're not working anymore. So you have a, a desert that's open to attack from anything. Because those are, those are guards, you know. The good bacteria is your guard, just like it is for your gut, for your skin too. Nobody's ever thought about this much. I didn't, not really. Kind of depended on nature. So we started working with it, and I soon knew that the only way we could achieve this is to use live microbiota. We had to use live spores. We couldn't use dead ones. Yeah, we could, everybody does, but it wouldn't work. Do you know what we had to go through to get live spores? <laughs> Again, Randy's saying, why can't you do something that's reasonably inexpensive to manufacture? <laughs> I said, because it, does, it won't work. So we, we got it. And what we found out, it was a great diagnostic tool, too. So a lot of times you see some really compromised skin conditions. I'd advise you, even though it's basically a home prescriptive, I'd advise you to, to start first with that. And then look. Because a lot of times you'll see symptoms that appear to be one thing, like the case of this Chinese man in Australia. He was diagnosed with eczema and hyperpigmentation as a result of. That's not unreasonable, because remember, hyperpigmentation is a defense mechanism, right? So it can accompany any kind of trauma. So he was diagnosed. So we had our first lot from the research, from our little research, I have a research lab that everything starts in. So we sent that over to Australia, to Debbie Dixon, and she put it on one of the workers in the warehouse, this guy. 24 hours later, she sends me this photo. 24 hours later, I go, wow, <laughs> my God, I got excited really for the first time. And as it turned out, his hyperpigmentation had nothing to do with anything because he was always scratching like that. Now he's completely free in a very short period of time. So you can have some good times with this. Now it is not a professional use treatment per se, but neither is CBE, and you use it in your cabin all the time, right? 
some things just are what they are. We can't make it more concentrated for professional use or change it up. It's, it is what it is. But you can use it in the cabin. You can do a, a microbio, do the cleanse, and then the, uh, the spray, and then the serum. Let them sit for a minute and take another look. You might see things change right there. And that's a good thing to say. Well, it, uh, let's identify what SPF really means. How long will your skin stand up to direct sunlight with nothing? You just think that way. Now, if you're a really white, Belfast girl, you know, pale as the side of a flounder, and you go out in the sun, direct sun, for, let's say it's a half hour before you start to burn, before the oxidization takes place, and, and all the other terrible free radical actions and the lipofusion soup starts before all of that starts, you've got a half hour. So it's 30 times 30 minutes equals how much? 900 something? So ostensibly you're, pr you're protected for 900 minutes from direct sun laying spread eagle. <laughs> That's the SPF. Um, if you have an SPF of 30, that is in a transepidermal cream, it kind of stands up the whole day. Now, what about natural mineral screens? Well, if you want to look like you're starring in a Japanese opera, dead white, <laughs> or just put zinc oxide, that's a full coverage. So you have to be sensible with this. Obviously, if they are walking around, they've got, and particularly if they're wearing DMK foundation, we don't claim an SPF, but we, I know there is, because it's a physical block. It's silicone. It's physical. They're pretty well protected, because we don't want to we don't want to raise the allergen potential by adding more and more and more and more screens for what? You know, if they're sensible people, and I don't, you don't have a lot to worry about that in the UK. Anyway, yeah, uh, we could do more, but uh, what about this? Put it on, let it sit. Ten minutes later, put on another coat. Now you got 60. <laughs> They're worried over unnecessary things. How do I see the future? I think we'll adapt very well to the future because we've always done things different than anybody else, always. Now, we've been copied a few times, but they never last, ever. I mean, how many alkaline washes, even here, there was an Indian lady here, I'm not going to mention her name because she still might be alive. She actually snuck into my lab in L.A. under the guise of coming as a friend. Then I found her downstairs fussing about, and I says, What are you doing? <laughs> oh, uh, I'm lost. She went back to her place in Newcastle and tried to make alkaline wash. And I didn't find out about it until I went to Singapore, and there was an Indian doctor there who was buying from her, because she's an Indian lady, right, manufacturing in the U.K., and he had this awful alkaline wash, and he, th he thought it was mine. He says, I've got so many bad, I'm being, being sued. I've got so many bad burn cases here. Is there anything you can do to help me? I said, well, first of all, that's not mine. Secondly, I will help you, but not because of that, because they need help. But yeah, so we've been copied, but see, they always try to copy products. They never want to bother with the education or the concept, never. So I'm, I'm not worried. But yes, we will adapt more and more into the medical field as we go along. But we're, we're creating a pathway for you ladies that are not MDs or nurses. But you'll be able to do it anyway with the respect of all the local physicians. You will. How do I know? Because we've already done it in some countries. We just didn't make a big announcement. But it got to be the point where certain plastic surgeons, other people, they'd start sending their patients around to you. And you'll see this happen. So that's what the future will have. I, I'm very happy about the uh, stem cell thing because it's real. And we can, you know, pat ourselves on the back for that one. And uh, the rest will be... I, I'll go back to this. Don't be afraid to charge what you think you're worth. As your confidence grows and your client base grows where you see successes, don't be afraid. Because you're worth it. You're spending all this time, you're being educated, and I'm only a phone call away or a text away or an email away from headquarters here. 
And that's one of the reasons I came, is because I wanted to see how much I missed everybody. <laughs> and I do. <laughs> I'll leave you with this. Once you know that you're getting the message across to people, and you start them thinking, that's my main goal, is to start everybody thinking. Forget what I say, forget even what you read in training, I mean, it's important, but how you think is everything. And that's what gives you the courage to press forward and start thinking about where you want to go with this career that does change people's lives. That's so, much, so important, you have no idea. As I, you know, am tending off towards a little bit retirement, demi-retirement, I often think, what have I done on this planet? That's more important to me than be being a millionaire, being famous, being all these things. And that part is getting even worse because I did this goddamn movie, and that's a whole nother world. Trust me, oh my God, you have no idea what the movie business is like. And it's suddenly getting calls from choreographers and actors and offering everything, including themselves. And I mean, it's just, <laughs> you know, and th that doesn't mean anything to me anymore. What does mean to me is when I leave this planet into whatever ex dimension that we go to, and I think we go somewhere, we're too intelligent just to be a creature on the planet, um, that they've left behind a legacy of people's lives being changed. That is vitally important. And I would like each of you to experience that in your heart. I know you have, Vicki. You've had a lot of changes at your place. By the way, you still look exactly the same. <laughs> All right? Is that it? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. <laughs>